I'm doing a product review of this Mastercraft cordless 4 volt pivoting screwdriver with a built in LED flashlight. And this review is going to be different from anything you've seen on YouTube. So stick around. I'm building a miniature 112 scale model Sears kit house. The house will look something like this when it's finished. Sears sold houses and kits between 1908 and 1942. Customer would order the kits which included lumber, windows, shingles, doors, you name it. The houses were delivered by rail and the customer would assemble the houses themselves. Recently when I was assembling one of the walls of my 112 scale miniature house that I'm building, I used my old electric screwdriver to screw in some screws. The old drill is about 44 years old. It's very large and bulky and it has a cord making it more difficult to use. I saw a flyer from a local big box store for this Mastercraft cordless 4 volt pivoting screwdriver. It's a house brand so it might be sold under a different name in the US or other countries. Let me know if you've seen this model in one of the stores where you are and what brand name does it go under. The electric screwdriver was on sale, it's $10 off. The regular price was $39.99 and the sale price was only $29.99. This is in Canadian dollars, so in US dollars that's about $22.37. So before we unbox the new cordless Mastercraft screwdriver, let's go back 44 years and unbox the Sears Craftsman electric drill. This drill was purchased approximately 44 years ago, around 1980, from Sears. Sears was a leader in all types of tools, both carpentry tools and mechanical tools. And that's the price of the drill approximately 44 years ago. It was $44.99, and that's about $150 dollars and 31 cents in today's dollars that's about 115 dollars and 86 us these numbers are in canadian dollars but you'll note i put the us equivalent dollars on the slides for you so let's see what we got for 45 bucks back in 1984 we got a sears craftsman drill still working 44 years later and it'll probably be working long after i need it anymore and we got a chuck key so that we could put the drill bits and screwdriver bits into the chuck. The drill came with no drill bits or screwdriver bits. They had to be purchased extra. And it didn't have a carrying case, just this cardboard box. But the Sears Craftsman drill, it was made in the USA. I was quite surprised when I unboxed the Mastercraft electric screwdriver. It has a plastic storage case. Although the workmanship of the plastic case isn't perfect, it's quite nice and you get a proper case for your tools and a place to keep all the small parts so they don't get lost. It sure beats the old cardboard box my drill came in. The case has snaps that keep it locked, and overall it's a pretty sturdy case. I, I kind of like it. Inside the case you'll find the instruction booklet. The cordless screwdriver, the adapter to charge it up, an extension adapter for the screw bits so you can get into tight places, and a number of screwdriver bits in various sizes and types. It has a full range of screwdriver bits. There's 20 bits included with this tool. The screwdriver has a light that illuminates your work when you're driving the screws into your project. It's a handy feature I wasn't expecting. Good job, well thought out. It has a forward and reverse for putting screws in or taking them out. This electric screwdriver also has a built-in flashlight. I personally have lots of flashlights kicking around the house, but I guess it never hurts to have another flashlight. There's a button on the tool, and when you press it in, you can twist the screwdriver to change it from a pistol grip style screwdriver to more of a conventional profile, depending on your needs. This combined with the extension that's included will help you get into all kinds of tight workspaces. The screwdriver bits and the extension are held in place using a magnet. I thought there would have been some type of a chuck or locking mechanism to hold the bits in. I kind of wonder how this is going to work. Will the bits fall out when working on a project? But hey, we'll check that out later when we put this Mastercraft pivoting cordless screwdriver through its paces. I have an actual project out in the garage I need to complete. So let's talk about the value of this screwdriver. 
So here we see the Craftsman drill which was built in the USA and the Mastercraft cordless screwdriver which is built in China. The Craftsman drill didn't come with any drill bits or screwdriver bits. They all had to be purchased extra. And there was no case for this drill, just this old cardboard box. Now let's compare it to its competition. I found this Ryobi cordless screwdriver. Here we see a similar type of screwdriver. The price is $59.98 Canadian, well that's about $44.70 American. The Mastercraft cordless drill on sale is about $22.35 American. That's about half the cost of the Ryobi. How durable are these tools in the long term? I don't know. I'm just a home user, a hobbyist. I mean, if you're using these tools 8 hours every day, I'd think you'd probably opt for something more robust. The Ryobi screwdriver comes in a blister pack and doesn't have a plastic case like the Mastercraft, and it only has 2 screwdriver bits compared to the Mastercraft, which has 20 screwdriver bits and an extension adapter, though the 2 bits that come with the Ryobi are longer and don't need an adapter. The other thing I noticed is that the Ryobi requires a USB plug to charge it. One of the things I've found with USB chargeable items is that you need an adapter to plug it into the wall outlet or you need to plug it into your computer. I remember buying some LED lights which required a USB adapter so I could plug them into the wall outlet. The USB adapters cost more than the lights themselves. So these are considerations when comparing these two electric screwdrivers. And do you have screwdriver bits or do you need to purchase these extra? The Mastercraft is startup ready with everything you need to get started. We're going to check it out in my project later in this video to see how it performs. So just for fun, let's compare our 44-year-old Sears Craftsman drill and see what we can get to replace it with in today's market. Here's a Black & Decker drill which can be purchased for $39.98 or about $29.79 US. That's less than I paid for the Sears drill 44 years ago. And let's see what that drill would have cost 44 years ago. We see that drill at $39.98 in today's dollars would have only cost us about $11.58 44 years ago. That's that's about $8.63 US. Let's have a look at another drill. This drill is sold by Ryobi and is $57.98 or $43.21 US. Let's check out and see what that would have cost 44 years ago. Well, it would have cost about $16.79 or about $12.51 US using our inflation calculator. And my 44-year-old Sears Craftsman drill, which cost $44.99, would be equivalent to about $33.53 US. And in today's dollars using the inflation calculator, that would be about $155.31 Canadian or $115.74 US. These electric drills are about the same price or even less than what I paid for them 44 years ago. And why would these drills have cost way less than my Sears Craftsman drill cost using the inflation calculator? The Sears Craftsman drill was a similar type of drill to these. It was the cheapest drill I could purchase at the time. I'm going to test the electric screwdriver in my project to see how it works and then I'm going to explain why I think the Sears Craftsman drill costs more 44 years ago than these other electric drills cost today. Hey, if you're enjoying my video, please hit the like button. As a new YouTuber, it really helps helps me out. Maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. That'd be awesome. And for those of you who've already subscribed, just want to say thanks. I really appreciate that. So let's get started and see how this electric screwdriver performs. The first step is to drill some pilot holes into the base of my miniature wall before putting the screws in. This will help prevent the wood from splitting when I put the screws in. I put some glue on the bottom of the wall. I'm placing the wall in position using some painter's tape to kind of hold it steady while I clamp it down.
the moment of truth has arrived. I'm using my new electric screwdriver to drive in the first screw. That worked great! I'm using the extension for the drill bit to get into this tight area where I need to put a screw. I'm impressed, that was really easy. So let's take a journey to Panama. This is a picture I took when I was in Panama a few years ago. Thousands of large freighters pass through here delivering all kinds of goods to the people all over the world. And this is the Bridge of the Americas. It divides North and South America crossing over the Panama Canal. These massive cranes are used to load and unload cargo off these large freighters that transit the world. Televisions to furniture to building supplies and yes, even electric screwdrivers and electric drills. Through globalization, every country can participate participate in world trade and contribute with their competitive advantages, whatever that may be. Raw materials such as oil or iron ore to make steel, foodstuffs like wheat or rice, and some countries' competitive advantage is cheap labor. So they can manufacture things like clothing, electronics, and of course, electric screwdrivers. Some countries like the United States offer highly skilled employees who can design expensive value-added products to create a better standard of living for everybody in the world. What every country country does what it's good at, the cost of goods is lowered, enabling us to have more products and more goods, making people wealthier and providing a better quality of life for everyone. When I was growing up, my family only had one telephone, and it was hardwired into the wall, not a cell phone. We only had one car, one TV, no computers, and the list goes on. Think about it, it wouldn't make sense to grow pineapples in Alaska, because you'd need greenhouses, heat, and so on. So the pineapples would cost a lot to produce. Grow them in Hawaii where the climate and land is perfect, making them cheaper to produce. There are pros and cons to this global economy, however. Sure, we have more consumer goods and lower prices, but the other side of the globalization process is that we lost some of our manufacturing jobs. You see, my 44-year-old Sears Craftsman electric drill was made in the USA. All the new tools today I checked out, they're all made in China. What used to be good-paying jobs in manufacturing consumer goods, clothing, steel, that sort of thing, are now now done in countries with cheaper labor. Oh yeah, and they have fewer environmental regulations and fewer regulations to protect the workers. Protecting our environment and our workers has a cost attached to it. So producing these types of products in countries with advanced economies such as America would raise the price of these goods significantly. But also we have to make sure that we can still produce goods at home in case of an emergency. Remember the difficulty finding N95 surgical masks during the pandemic because they were mostly produced overseas? There are winners and losers in globalization. For a lot of people, the quality of life improves because they become wealthier and things become cheaper. We all want these cheaper goods, but they come at a cost. We import these cheap goods, but we're also ending up exporting some of our manufacturing jobs. I couldn't find any electric drills made in the USA like my 44-year-old Sears Craftsman drill. Every one was made in China. We don't make televisions and other electronics in North America anymore, and we don't produce a lot of clothing here either. The Master Craft Cord a screwdriver works great. It's a great value. Would I buy it if it cost $100 or $150 instead of $39 and was made in the USA? If everything was made domestically and cost more, could I afford it? What items would I give up if everything cost more? When we lose some of these mid-level manufacturing jobs, we're left with just highly skilled, highly paid, high-end jobs and lower paid, lower end service jobs. This creates a division in society where we have a lot of people earning a lot of money and others not earning that much. The gap between rich and poor gets larger. We have to remember stability in society comes from the middle class, which seems to be eroding away. The big question is, what do we do about it? I don't know the answer. Well, I didn't mean to get so far off topic. When I pulled out the box with my old Sears Craftsman drill with it and I saw the price sticker on it, it just got me thinking. This started out as a simple review for an electric screwdriver, which works great by the way, I really like it. And there you have it. The miniature frame wall has been screwed into place and attached to the the 112 scale miniature Sears kit house. Hey, why don't you check out this video? I promise no more product reviews in that one. We'll see you in the next video.